In this first lecture on managing the Linux boot process, we're going to look at two very important items. First, we'll look at actually booting the computer. We'll go into the BIOS and take a look at how we can modify parameters in the BIOS to select certain media to boot to. And then we're going to look at something called the Grand Unified Bootloader, or GRUB. GRUB is the initial boot screen we see when we start up, but it's more than that. If something should go wrong with your system, GRUB is probably the place you'll start trying to rescue your environment. So it plays an important part in what we need to do. We'll look at editing it during the startup process, and we'll look at editing the GRUB comp file so it'll be configured exactly the way you want it every time the system boots. So let's take a quick look at a uh, BIOS. What I have here is a, a VMware virtual machine that I'm going to boot up. Now, I typically would be pressing, as the system is booting up, pressing F12 or delete or some key sequence to get into the BIOS. Unfortunately, the machine boots so quickly, it's almost impossible to catch the key sequence to do it. So what you can do in VMware is have the system boot directly to the BIOS, and that's all I'll do right now. Now this is a virtual BIOS, but it really is similar to any other BIOS you would see on a, a PC of any kind. We have some basic menus that we can go through here. Most of the time what you're coming in here for is to maybe tweak your hard drives in some way or set some other parameters on some of your other ports. Another common thing to do is to actually come in here to set the boot order, and I'm going to go down here. And as you can see at the bottom of the BIOS screen, we have options for moving around the order of the items that show up in the menu. And as you can see here, I have four items, removable devices, which could be a USB device, um, hard drive, CD-ROM. So what I'd like to do in this case is to tell my system to boot to a CD-ROM first if there's a bootable DVD in the drive. And so, so to do that, I am going to go down using my down arrows and then I'll press the plus arrows as you can see down there to change the value and as I press it you can see the CD-ROM goes up the CD-ROM goes down and I'll just leave it right there now I'm going to press F10 to save and exit and that's typically what we would do in the environment and as you can see right here grubs already coming up to boot the system so we're gonna stop this right here I'll get out of this because we're not going to be using VMware um, for this part of it. But before we actually boot the Linux machine, I'd like to just talk about the process that we're going to see. Let me bring up my little drawing board here. And here we have a Linux computer. And after we power it on, uh, there's a BIOS built into the system that's job is to check all the hardware, make sure everything is functioning correctly. And if everything passes, uh, the post process, then its job is to look for the boot sector on the first bootable drive. And in this case, it's looking at that first 512 bytes. And what it will find there is GRUB. So the second part of the phase after BIOS is GRUB is initialized. Now GRUB has two stages, and the first stage is that first 512 bytes, which it's Pure job is just to get the second, the second stage and actually load, start loading the, uh, uh, the kernel and the initial RAM disk. Once the kernel is loaded and everything is set correctly, then the system is handed off to a process called init, which is the initial um, process that starts the operating system that we actually interact with. So let's go take a look at that grub and start pit taking a look at Grub and seeing what we can do with it. Here's where you could press F12. Okay, now I'm gonna press the space bar here because I wanna stop it from moving past this point. What you're seeing here is Grub the first stage. Remember the whole point of the first st stage of Grub in that first 512 bytes is just to get us to the second stage. Now, the one thing I want you to look at here is we have a menu item that we can choose from, and if we had different kernels or different operating systems, they would show up in here also. But if you look down here at the bottom, we can see certain things that we can change. Uh, let me get my pen going here. Um, we have 
the option to actually edit some of these items. So if we see E right here for edit, and we could actually, there actually is a little command prompt that we can go to. Typically, those are the two that I would go into fairly regularly. We can also modify some other parameters with A. What we're going to look at is editing the initial grub menu. And why would we do that? We do that because we want to be able to possibly go into different run levels, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. And many times you need to go into it to maybe rescue the environment or configure the environment. So let's go take a little bit long, little deeper look at actually the grub menu now. I'll escape out of this. Now I'll actually press E for edit. And what you see here is a couple of stanzas that have some very, very important information. The first one is telling us where the root of grub is. Now that, that's kind of interesting in the fact that we think of uh, the root of the file system, as we talked about last week, as being slash. But remember, the computer hasn't booted up yet. And so until it does, grub says the beginning of the file, of the beginning of the operating system is where grub is and the kernel and that's what's being specified here with that HD 0 so it's finding the first drive first partition remember everything starts with zero and then below that right below that we have information about the kernel itself it's going to load that kernel now notice once again it's saying starting from slash and that that part can get a little weird um, because what it really is saying is slash boot that's where the beginning of grub is and we'll take a look at that in a second so from here, uh, grub hands off, stage two actually kicks in, and this is where the kernel is loaded, the file system is loaded in a read-only manner. Once everything has been set up, initial RAM disk gets drivers going and things that we may need to access uh, stuff on the uh, operating system. Once that's all done, everything is handed off to the process init, and that's where we actually start getting the Linux operating system up and going. So let's let's boot into it, and then let, we'll take a little look at Grub. So I'll select this, and I'll press B to boot. All right, the system is finally finished booting, and now I will click and log in as student. And what I'll do, as soon as I get in here, I will SU over the root, and we'll be able to take a look at the boot folder. Terminal. All right. So remember the kernel, and then we talked about this when we talked about the, the files, the file system hierarchy. The kernel is in the slash boot directory. If I do this and press S here, I see a couple of things that we saw referenced out uh, on the grub menu. First, here is the kernel itself, and here's the initial RAM disk. Um, that help boot the system. Let me do this in a long format. All right. This, when grub says slash, where it says slash and then VM uh, Linus, that is actually specifying this particular directory, slash boot. Remember, so the operating system has not started up, so root is not uh, accessible at that time. So grub sees itself right wherever the kernel is as being the root of the file system and that's why they use slash there and that's typically why slash boot is put on a partition by itself because grub is very particular about where <laughs> everything is it wants to make sure it's at the very beginning of the drive so it's not unusual at all to make the very first partition on your system uh, the boot partition and we can actually do a df-h here and we can see right here, right there, that that tells me that the drive is SDA and it's the first partition and that's where boot is at. So this is really important stuff. Now what we're going to do is take a look at the grub comp file that we'll be playing around with a little bit later on. We can CD into the grub directory. So where I'm going is right here. So I'll CD into grub. I'll do an ls-l here. And remember, I talked about two stages. Well, here they are. Here's the first stage, and you can see it's 512 bytes. And here's the second stage. And it's 
substantially larger. And its job is to get every, all of this going right in the second stage. So file systems are, are launched and made accessible. The file that we can edit is right here. This grub comp file um, can be edited to change the way the system boots if we think it's necessary. So I'll do a VI on the menu list file. And here we can see um, some of the parameters we can change. Of course, it shows right where the boot uh, drive is going to be. This shows you right here that HD0 comma zero and slash grub so it's saying that's the root of the file system and then below that we can see that after slash which is really this after slash um, we have the uh, actual kernel itself and then a whole bunch of other parameters in here in this file we can change things if we had multiple operating systems we can change which one is the default if you want more time during the boot menu load up, you can change that here also. Um, you can change your splash screen that's going on, right? You can change that here and any number of parameters. The, the typical thing you would do in here is password protect grub um, by setting that up in here. So that's a little view of the grub file. What I really want to do is take you out to grub and show you some of the things we can do with grub. So we'll do that next.